Hi, welcome to a new part of our Swift UI for Beginners series. Today we will continue working on our Swift UI demo app and learn how to display an image when tapping on the Show Me the Logo button. By doing this, we're getting familiar with the basic data flow concepts used in Swift UI and the concept of property wrappers such as state and binding. Before we move on, we need to import the Blackbird's icon file into our project first. You can download the file from the link provided in the description. Of course, you can use any other file for this. To add the file to your project, open the Assets folder and drag and drop the image file into it. Make sure the image is named correctly. The Swift UI icon should be placed right above our detect views. Therefore, we insert an image view above our inner VStack. By using a plain image view without any modifiers, Swift UI simply inserts the full sized image into our content view's body. Therefore, we need to give the image a frame which serves as a fixed size container for it. We do this by applying a frame modifier again and giving the image frame a suitable width and height. In order for the image to not exceed the frame, we have to add a clipped modifier. The clipped modifier cuts out the area of the view that exceeds the specified frame. Next, we need to resize the image so that it fits into the frame. However, we want to achieve this without distorting the dimensions of the original image. To change the scaling of an image, we must use the resizable modifier first. The resizable modifier must be applied to enable changing the scaling of an image. It is important that the resizable modifier is the first modifier of the image view. Next, we apply the aspect ratio modifier. This modifier scales the image so that it fits into the frame by using the specified dimensions. For keeping the original dimensions of the image, we can choose between the fill or fit content mode. Fill scales the image so that the entire frame gets filled out. The fit content mode makes sure that the entire image is visible within the frame. In our example, we choose fill as the content mode. We want the image to be only displayed after the user tapped on the button. But how can we achieve this functionality? To keep track of whether the corresponding image view should be shown or not, we declare a show icon variable above our content view's body. At default, the logo shouldn't be shown. So let's assign false to it. We only want to show the image when the show icon property is true. Thus, we conditionally initialize the image view by using an if statement inside the outer vStack. We could now change the show icon's value by using the button's action parameter. But note the following. Whenever the user taps on the button, the show icon property gets toggled. Toggling means that the property gets true when it's false and the other way around. However, this wouldn't tell the content view to update its body. Although the show icon would get true when the user taps the button, the content view wouldn't notice. Therefore, it wouldn't initialize the image view by executing the code inside the if statement. So how can we get the view to rebuild itself when the user taps the button? For this purpose, Swift UI provides us with the so-called state property wrapper. You can recognize property wrappers by the at symbol. They equip variables with a specific logic depending on the type of the property wrapper we use. This logic is the core of the data flow concept in Swift UI. So understanding property wrappers is really important. State is probably the most frequently used property wrapper in Swift UI. We'll get to know most of the other ones throughout this series. Anyway, we start with this basic one. You can easily declare a state by putting the at state keyword in front of a variable. Let's do this with our show icon property. Remember that state properties must always be related to a view. So make sure you always declare them inside a view struct but not inside the view's body. We can now toggle the show icon state when the user taps the button. Let's talk about what the state property wrapper is doing for us. When using the state property wrapper, you can read and manipulate data just as you do with regular variables in Swift. But the key difference is that every time the data assigned to a state changes, the related view gets refreshed. Let's explain it by taking a look at our app. Every time the user taps the button, the show icon property gets toggled. Because this property is a state, its related view notices and rebuilds itself with checking the show icon property. Based on the value assigned to this property, we execute the if statement with eventually showing and hiding the image view. Try it out in the live preview. 
To use interactive views like buttons in the canvas you need to tap on the play button next to it for starting a live preview. When you now tap the button the show icon state gets true. This causes the whole view to rebuild itself with eventually showing us the image. If we tap on the button again the show icon state gets false again. This causes the content view to hide the image view. As said this topic is very important for understanding how Swift UI works so make sure you really understand it. When showing and hiding the image the position of the remaining views currently changes. This is because the outer view stack places all of its views in the center of the screen. Therefore while the image view is not being shown the remaining views are getting pushed to the center. But how can we tell Swift UI that the text views and the button should always be pushed to the bottom regardless of whether the image view is displayed? To do this we can use a spacer view. A spacer view creates an invisible space between the surrounding views and therefore pushes these views to the side. A spacer inside a V stack pushes the views along the X and a spacer inside an H stack along the Y axis. The image view should always be pushed to the top and the remaining views to the bottom. So let's insert a spacer view between them. However we want our views to be a bit more far away from the upper and lower edge. Therefore we add a top padding to the image view. And a bottom padding to our button. Let's start a live preview again. The text views and the button is always pushed down to the bottom of the screen regardless of whether the image is being shown or not. Until now we only worked inside our content view struct. However such structs can easily get confusing when they grow and grow as we add more views to them. Therefore it's best practice to outsource views in their own structs whenever it's possible. So let's say we want to outsource our button view. To do this command click on it and click on extract subview. Next name your outsourced view. For example, logo button. Now we receive an error. This is because when outsourcing a view it gets wrapped into its own struct. But currently the logo button struct itself doesn't own a property called show icon. To fix this we need to insert an appropriate property into our outsourced logo button struct. But instead of creating a state property on its own we want to have a property that derives its data from the show icon state of our content view. We do this in order to enable data flow between them. To do this we declare a binding property that's also called show icon above our logo button's body. Since we want it to derive its content from the show icon state of the content view we don't assign any data to it. Instead we pass the data assigned to the show icon state in our content view when initializing the outsourced logo button view. Remember that binding property wrappers are used for creating a data connection between a view and its source of data. In our case the source of data is the show icon state of our content view. That's it. We are finished with creating our first SwiftUI app. You learned a lot of stuff like using several SwiftUI views like text buttons and images and how to stack them. You also explored how to use state and binding property wrappers. In the next part we are going to learn how to present data inside lists. You're also going to learn how to connect multiple Swift UI views and stack them inside a view hierarchy. We hope to see you in the next part of this course. Until then make sure to subscribe to this channel to not miss any new videos.